So brothers and sisters, in our gospel, I mean in our first reading today, we are reminded by the prophet that God has prepared a banquet for his people, a feast that is beyond our wildest imaginations. This is an image of the kingdom of God, of heaven. The idea is that heaven holds everything we ever wanted or will want, and God provides it for us, free of charge. Everything we would ever desire is there for us. And this is a beautiful image that draws our attention to the kingdom of God that is already in our midst, how God pours out his love and his grace upon us even now. But as in the past few weeks in our gospel today, Jesus transforms that image from the prophets by adding some new details and by giving us a different approach to it. In his parable, where he refers to the great feast or the banquet, it is one that is prepared by the king and it is prepared for his people in honor of his son's wedding. This was a common thing in Jesus' time and truly even today, that weddings were beautiful feasts, but in those days they would feed an entire town, especially if it was a king who had charge of a kingdom. He would invite everyone from all the locations and when food was uh, hard to prepare and scarce, that was a huge event for any uh, group of people. But in this case, the banquet is rejected. Those who are invited do not attend. They make excuses. They ignore the king's invitation. Therefore, the king sends out new invitations to others, to those who ordinarily would not have received such an invitation or even have expected an invitation from the king to such a banquet. Now, this could be a continuation of that Old Testament notion. Jesus is simply saying that those to whom the banquet has been offered they have rejected it. And he's speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees and the uh, Jewish leaders, religious leaders, who have turned their backs on God's love and mercy or the very notion of God being a loving and merciful God. So he's putting this in that context for them, saying, even as you have been told that God prepares a beautiful banquet for you, you are rejecting the invitation and worse, you are keeping others from accepting that invitation. And that is certainly a very powerful and important reading. I'm going to suggest an, a, an immediate kind of meaning to it. I'm going to suggest that one possible interpretation can be that it is about vocations. Vocations to the priesthood and religious life and to the diaconate and to service in the church. I suggest that God has prepared a banquet for those who make the choice to serve him in the church. And he has sent out that invitation to many people, many young people especially, who are ignoring or rejecting the invitation. We need to ask ourselves the question why. We have seen the decline in numbers, in priesthood, in sisters, in religious life, in religious orders, Many orders are failing, many orders are disappearing from church ministry, from the life of the church, because there simply aren't enough young men and women 
embracing that for themselves. So I ask myself, what has changed? Has God ceased making invitations? Has God ceased calling these young men and women to that life? Or is it something else? Is it that it is much easier to ignore, much easier to reject that invitation? There are too many worldly lures and anxieties that detour, detour young people from that, from accepting the invitation. So let me say that from my perspective as a priest of over 31 years now, the Lord has indeed prepared an amazing banquet for those who choose to accept the invitation. What is the appetizer? Well, the appetizer is all the knowledge that you gained, all the knowledge that I have acquired as a priest. All the way from my seminary studies in which I received a Master's of Divinity to my studies at Catholic University where I received a license in canon law, learning Spanish in Cuernavaca, Mexico, studying theology, studying psychology, studying pastoral ministry. I have met some of the most brilliant minds in the church. They have taught me how to interpret scripture, how to understand the Bible so that it applies not only to my life, but to every life. I have really been, I have received that, what is an appetizer? An appetizer is something that makes you hungry for the rest, right? That for me is the appetizer. All the knowledge I gained was giving me an appetite for ministry, a desire to share that knowledge, to teach others about God all that I had learned about God. So that's a pretty awesome appetizer just to begin the banquet with. Then there's the salad. The salad's the filler. The salad is where I learned to empty myself, to let God fill me up. The salad is learning about myself, about my strengths and my weaknesses, confronting my demons as well as embracing my angels. The salad for me is all the retreats that I went on, the spiritual direction that I received, the programs at the various um, retreat houses like the Cynical and Holy Name, spending time um, in the seminary library, all those things that helped me to grow spiritually in my own life, to prepare me for the life of ministry. A pretty good salad as well. The entree, of course, is the ministry itself. I have met people of all ages, all states of life, all circumstances, all ethnicities, and I have brought Christ to them. I am never worried or concerned about failing because I know God is with me. I know God is helping me to make a difference in other people's lives. And isn't that what every one of you young people want to do? Isn't that the motivation we all have in our youth to make a difference in the world, to make an impact in someone's life, many people's lives. I have helped people grow spiritually and that has given me great satisfaction. I am satisfied with the ban banquet that God has prepared for me because I accepted the invitation to that banquet. And what is the dessert? Well, the dessert is the fact 
that I have an encountered Christ in all those people I ministered to. The dessert is the fact that I have tasted the Lord in the lives of others and that as much as I have helped them, I hope, I know that they have helped me greatly to see Christ in every person. That is the banquet which Christ has prepared for me and it is the banquet that he is inviting you too, especially you young people who have yet to make another choice of vocation in your life. If you have ever, ever felt that maybe, just maybe, God is calling you to a vocation, to priesthood or religious life, or the diaconate or service in the church, you have to respond to that invitation. You cannot ignore it. You cannot reject it. It may not lead where we think or where you think, but then again, it may. And, you know, I'm going to uh, have some, you know, we have in this gospel the story of the person who came to the wedding who wasn't dressed properly. Again, we're not going to get caught up in how people dress. We're, what we're looking at here is people who are really not prepared. Now, I reserve that for parents who detour, who distract, who prevent, who oppose their children pursuing a vocation to priesthood or religious life. That is where you have some plan of your own for them. You want to live your life through them rather than let God call them to what they may be called to be. You cannot do that. That's being thrown out into the darkness with your hand and feet bound, hands and feet bound, to wail and gnash your teeth and all those things that the scripture had reserved for that person. Because that's a pretty harsh thing, isn't it? Why would the king act so harshly to someone who uh, simply wasn't dressed right? It's because you're talking a good game. You're saying the church is important. How wonderful is it that Father John has answered the call. And then when your own son and daughter says, you know, I might want to do that, you say, no, 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 that's not for you. That's for him. That's for those others. Uh, that's, that's really wearing false uh, clothing. That's not being very, very supportive. So here again, and, uh, you know, it's, there, are, there is a place for everyone in the church. Clearly, those of you who are already committed to a vocation of married life, especially for you gentlemen, there can be a call to the diaconate. There can be a call to serve God's church in a beautiful capacity in which another beautiful feast is prepared for you. You've already received a beautiful banquet in your married life. But here is another call to a, another banquet that is just as beautiful and just as fulfilling. I see my priesthood as a blessing every day of my life. I am grateful that my parents supported me and that I followed God's call. And I'm not going to paint a completely rosy picture. Like St. Paul, I've known times of deprivation, loneliness, whatever. At the same time that I've known the rich, sumptuous banquet that has been laid out before me. But I don't regret a minute of having offered my life to God, of having accepted the invitation to his banquet. And so I just ask you all, 
to continue to promote vocations, to continue to pray for vocations, to continue to suggest to the young people that you see in your life who show great promise because all of us have a call to a vocation. And you know, you know that there are some of your young people who have been touched by the call, the invitation to the priesthood or religious life or the diaconate or to some other service in the church. And it becomes incumbent upon you to help them accept that invitation, not to be the ones who say, ignore that, reject that. The scriptures today can be read in many ways, as I've pointed out before of the scriptures. But I do believe that in addition to the heaven that is to come, there is the kingdom of God that is here on earth. And every young person who answers the call, they are part of that kingdom, of building it up, of making the banquet that we all celebrate that much more meaningful and beautiful and tasty. And that's the scriptures I see today. The banquet the Lord has prepared for us, but a special banquet that he prepares for those who choose to serve his church in love.